So hi everybody, I'm, I'm Tom from Alliance Commerce Toys and Games. Uh, I was asked and uh, am honored to, to be asked to come down here and talk a little bit on comic books. A um, little bit about myself, I do have a shop that I opened recently in O'Fallon. It's at uh, 110 West State Street, O'Fallon, Illinois. Me and my partner, Ben Stinkelman, we opened it June 1st of this year. Uh, I've been selling collectibles and, and comics and toys and things like that for 20 years now, coming up on 20 years. Uh, my partner Vince has been in the business for about five. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of work. It's, uh, there's, there's a lot of different aspects to it. You get to meet a lot of different people. I've got to travel some. It's been, it's been very entertaining. Um, on comics themselves, comics were first, the first official comic book came out in 1933. It was Famous Funnies, number one. Um, and that's considered the first book, but that's not the Holy Grail of comics. The Holy Grail of comics is actually comics number one. That's the first appearance of Superman. A high grade copy of that will run you about $3 million. Um, you said million? Three million. Mm -hmm. A coverless one that's just, you know, complete book, no cover, covers missing, rough condition, that will start at about $10,000 in that shape. Mm -hmm. uh, your next probably the most desired book after that is Detective Comics 27, which is the first appearance of Batman. Um, I high grade of that, it's about two, two, five, two point five million dollars. Um, Carvelous copy of that still can be in the ten thousand range, eight to ten thousand dollar range, um, and it just kind of goes up from there. The reason that period of time from 1933 to 19. Uh, I want to say 56 in that range. Don't I'm not I don't have the information in front of me. It's actually on my phone. I'm using my phone to record this. So, um, but anyway, though that period of time is considered the golden age of comics. One of the big reasons why it's so rare to find books from that era is World War II. During World War II, you had the paper drives. You had um, people were rationing and things like that. So li li literally, people would go down the street with a wagon saying, "Bring out your paper. You got any old paper?" Mom sees a stack of books that she doesn't care about. I want to get rid of this clutter. There goes the books. So a lot of the books were destroyed because of, of that type of thing uh, going on, the rationing. That's something we don't really experience. We're really lucky uh, at this time in history. Um, so yeah, so that's the reason why Golden Age is worth more. Silver Age, um, there are much more of those. That goes from, like I said, the late 50s through the 60s to right about 1970. Um, and a lot of your key superheroes that are real popular today, Spider-Man showed up at that period of time, Fantastic Four, they're, they're considered Marvel's first superhero comic book is Fantastic Four number one. A near mint copy of that, I think, I think is around 300,000. Um, yeah, I haven't checked the market lately on it because I haven't had one myself personally, but, uh, and then again, a rough copy of that, several thousand dollars. Um, and, he, you know, that's that's a very desirable one. Spider-Man first showed up in Amazing Fantasies 15. Um, high grade of that, I think, is around 800,000 right around about now. Um, a coverless version of that sells for about 3,000. Um, I have actually, I haven't owned one, but I've actually held a few copies of that. And, you know, um, I did bring some things that are from my personal collection that I thought I would show off. Uh, one of my favorite things when I was a kid was show and tell, so that's what kind of this feels like today. Um, this is an early Amazing Spider-Man. It's Amazing Spider-Man number six. It's also the first period of the Lizard. So, you know, any of the first 12 of Spider-Man have quite a bit of value. Any Silver Age Spider-Man really does, but the first 12, there's a lot of key books, and a key book is where some, some, somebody dies, uh, introduction of a new character, something along those lines, and like I said, this is, an early book, and it's also the first appearance of the lizard. Um, this is a 4.0. I want to say in this condition, about twelve hundred dollars. Um, so it's a, you know, it's not the most expensive Spider-Man book I own, but it's one I thought I would share with you today. Now this book is graded. It's actually encased in plastic. Um, outside of the plastic, they're considered raw books. That's what they call them. When you get it graded, it's uh, almost like a graded coin, if you're ever familiar with that, where a, a team of professionals sit down, they look at it, and they all come to a consensus of an opinion. 
they take the average grade and then that's what they get to this point. Um, this is a Golden Age book that's in pretty rough shape. It's a .5, so it didn't even register a one, but it's a Joker cover. Any Batman book from really 1970 back with, with the Joker on it is very popular, is very coveted. This particular book is from 1946. Um, so even though it's a .5, rough condition, but with it having the Joker on it and everything, this is still about a three to $500 book in that range. Um, and it's very cool. I mean, it's got you know Batman and Robin. One thing to look for when you're when you're collecting, you don't come across it so much in modern books, but it still happens from time to time. But in Golden Age books, they talk about the three Ds: the victim, the villain, and the victor. If you've got those three on the cover, that tends to be more desirable. Now this just has the villain and the victor, so it's missing the victim. But if it had those three, those are something that the people who collect Golden Age books really look for: is the three Ds. Um, this is, I'll start with this one. So this is Walking Dead number one. Um, this is a modern age book, and I'm sure some of you are familiar with the TV show. When the TV show came out, it made this book go through the roof. Um, it, when it was first released, it, it's a, from an independent comic company. Uh, the company was struggling at the time, and there wasn't a big print run of this particular book, and there wasn't a whole lot of necessarily interest in it. It was very well received by the critics, and the readers enjoyed it and everything. But once it became a TV show, this book went from being about a two to three hundred dollar book to ten thousand dollars in a higher grade, in nine eight, a perfect grade. This is an eight five. So even in this condition at this time. Now, the market crashed since then. It's almost like the stock market. You have to really pay attention to it on that type of level. Um, when the market crashed on it, it brought the book down to, you can probably get a 9-8 copy now, I want to say, for about $2,500. So it went from, 10, went from a, you know, a few hundred dollars to $10,000, and now it's leveled off at about $2,500. This book's anywhere from eight to 1000 in this condition. How many copies of that book was made? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. Sorry. Any, any idea? A whole lot? Not uh, too many? I, you know, it was it was it was a short run, but I don't know I don't know the amount. I apologize. Thank you. Um, this is Walking Dead 35. Now, nothing really that important came happen in this book, except for there was an error, and it's a very very low run. There's only I think about 300 of these known to exist with this error, and I just happened to to, to get a copy of it. Um, now it's in PGX, which is I'm not very well respected. <coughs> Excuse me. Our company. So I really need to have it recased. But in this grade, it is about, um, I want to say about $600. Here's a, a book that a lot of people enjoy Avengers number one. Um, this is the first appearance of the Avengers as a team. Um, all these other characters, Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor, uh, they had all appeared in other books, but they teamed up finally and became the Avengers that we know today. This one's also signed by Stan Lee, oh, yeah. and this red label means it's been verified as well, about 2500 hmm. huh. This is Avengers 4. This is the first appearance of Silver Age Captain America. Captain America first showed up in a comic book company called Timely Comics. Um, those books tend to be like in a high grade, six figures, you know, five, six hundred thousand dollars in a high grade. Um, but both Jack Kirby and Stan Lee worked at Timely, and uh, they both were instrumental in bringing that character, resurrecting that character, and bringing him to Marvel. So, and it's the first appearance of him there. Oh, thank you so much. You can tell I was struggling, huh? <laughs> now, this is Batman Adventures 12. First appearance of Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is very popular right now. Um, this is a 9.6, so it's two tenths lower than, than, than a 9.8. Um, but still, uh, probably about $800. I would say this book runs um, a nine eight. If I had it in that, those are those are close to two thousand. Uh, there's a lot of interest in her. Anytime that a character is brought into film, 
it tends to make the market go crazy or TV show or anything like that. Plus, Harley's already a very popular character from the animated series, and you know she's just very popular. Margot Robbie's done a great job with her in the films, and they have a movie coming out soon, Birds of Prey. She'll be reprising it for that. There's also going to be Suicide Squad number two. So I don't look for this book to drop much either. I, I look for it to only keep going up in value as well. So. And then last, I have my New Mutants 98, which is the first appearance of Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool, again, because of the movies, is very popular. This is a high grade. Um, now, what's ironic about this book is not too long ago, you could have picked up a very nice copy of this book for about $20 or $30. And even prior to the movie, people all of a sudden just fell in love with this character, and the book started to really climb. And then the movie came out, and then it really went crazy. Um, and 9.8, I'm not 100%, but I think the market's right around 12, 1200 on, on this book. Um, so for a book that was picked up for a dollar in 1991, pretty good return on your investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I wanted to cover these real quick. These are trade paperbacks. And what they did was they took the 12 individual books that come out, you know, that you, that you have the singles there, and put the whole story into one of these. Now, and make, so you don't have to try to find all 12 of the books and, and everything along those lines. It's a complete novel now of the story. The Watchmen is one of the reasons why I collect comics. It's just a great story. It might be a little too adult for some of you, but it's, it's, just, it's just great. And I studied English literature in college. This is one of the best books, not just comic books I've ever read. It's just one of the best books I've ever read in my life. I mean, it's just a great story. The characters are very flawed, um, and it really speaks to, um, it was the period of time that it's from, it was written in the 80s, um, it goes from the 50s up to the present day of the, in the 80s, um, but it really spoke to how the geopolitical systems were going on at the time, how the, the country itself, you know, it's 20 years after Vietnam, people are starting to see that the government doesn't always do the right thing or it doesn't it does sometimes does the wrong thing for the right reasons if that makes sense it gets into that kind of murky area um i kind of like um i relate to the jack nicholson speech in uh, a few good men if you're familiar with that film where he says you want me on that wall you need me in that wall i'm the guy who does the dirty little things you don't like to think about it's the, so it kind of deals with that level of the superhero on that level where they do things that aren't necessarily for, it's for the greater good, but you wouldn't consider it a good guy, you know? Um, and, and it's very dark, like I said, it's not, it, it, is for, it is suggested for mature readers, but it's just a great book. Um, there's another one too that I'm, I forgot to bring a copy of called um, The Dark Knight Returns, and it's, it's with Batman, and Batman's 50 years old. The government has retired all the superheroes, and the only one that's left is Superman, but nobody's allowed to speak of him in public. And through a turn of events or whatever, Batman comes back and he has to fight the forces of good and evil and all that. But I mean, it's just, it's just I don't want to ruin it because it's just, it's just a fantastic, amazing story. And it really took them from Batman to a whole nother level and to his psychology and everything. It's written by a gentleman named Frank Miller. Alan Moore wrote this, great writer, Frank Miller. He, both those two guys changed the face of comics and storytelling in general, in my opinion. Just, they're, they're just marvelous. Um, so if you're ever looking for something to get going, those are the two books that I suggest you start with and then kind of branch out your interest from there. There's, um, there are so many different storylines out there and the thing that's really great right now, especially with Marvel, is they're really thinking about the female audience and bringing those characters even more prominent so if you're a young lady or, you know, if you're interested in reading something that you can identify more on that level. But one thing I'll say in Marvel and DC's defense, they never treated, the female heroes were heroes just as much as the male heroes. I really respect that about them. Going even back to the 60s, Sue Storm, you know, just, just all of them involved with the Fantastic Four, um, all the way coming up in the market wasn't really geared and there weren't a lot of girls necessarily picking up comic books, but when they wrote about him, they weren't treated as always the victim. They were the hero as well. There was Miss Marvel, who later became Captain Marvel. Um, 
and like I said, they did treat them on an equal equal footing and pairing, and I give them credit for that. But there is such more of a, a diverse field of characters by race and by gender and, and everything. So if you do you think you know that's just a guy thing? There's plenty of storylines out there. And right now in the Marvel universe, there's a character that you might be familiar with called Squirrel Girl, who um, she's the most powerful one. She's kicked everybody's butt. They've had her fight everybody, and she's she's kicked Thanos. She's kicked. So Wolverine, she's just she's just out there, just you know, and they've really built her up really fast, and and she's an, it's an interesting read as well. It's safe for kids, you know, Squirrel Girl. If you're interested in checking that out, um, are there any questions? Anything along those lines? Well, I appreciate your time and thanks for coming to see Actually, me today. I have sure, a question. sure. So, did I hear you right? Some comics without covers are valuable. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because. Some comics get they get so far out of reach from the collector, the, the the high grade stuff. You know, I don't know. You probably have an extra three million laying around if you come across Nation Comics one, yeah, but sure. most of us don't. So we have to get into the game, and you know, you want to be able to say, I own an Action Comics number one. It's coverless, but I own an Action Comics number one. That's a big deal. That's that. There's a lot of ego in comic book collecting. I'm going to be honest. I I like showing up my books. Um, like I said, these aren't even some of my best books. And I get a kick out of out of going. I got this. You don't. Ha ha. And it's just kind of this this thing that that all the other collectors and dealers and things like that we look for. Uh, I take pride in my shop that we have some decent books in there as well. People come in even if they're not looking to buy. They'll be like, Hey, look, you know, you guys got that. You got this. You got that. So they just want to get in the game. And and how like with Harley Quinn here, I've owned three copies of this. And what I'll do is I'll just, when I get a grade, one that's a little bit better grade, I sell the lower grade and I put that towards getting the better grade and, and just keep going like that. Um, and that's how I got to, to, I went from a 9.0 to a 9.8 in Deadpool, you know. So that person that gets the coverless, well now he's got to get more with the cover. You know, it just keeps going forward like that and that's where the addiction kind of takes over. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I ask another sure. question? Sure, please. Um, you you got them graded. Do you get them graded locally or? No, there's a company called CGC. There's three companies. Um, there's only two you should really deal with, in my opinion. It's CGC and CVCS. PGX. They've had some issues. Some. Um, they're just not that respected, and it can affect the value of the book. Uh, CGC is the most respected. A CBCS is a company that was started by disgruntled CGC people who were like okay, screw you guys, we're going to start our own company. And they started their own company. And they're, they're fairly well respected, but CGC books tend to bring anywhere from 10 to 30% better price than, than CBCS. PGX can be 40 to 60% difference. I mean, because their, their graders just aren't, in my opinion, as good. I've had friends buy books that were ranked, like let's say, like an 8.0. They turn around and send them off to CGC. CGC said, no, this is a 4.0. You know, I mean, it's been really... it's. There's been some problems. Um, anyway, so you send it off to them. There are fees, and they have tiers based on what you think the value of the book is, and and it takes and also the amount of time it takes before them to get back. Um, and you can even if you go to a convention and you pay as much as a thousand dollars, but if you have a book that's worth six hundred thousand dollars, you know, but you know you, you you can get it graded the same day. You turn in the book. They look at it, they case it, they do everything, but it is an exorbitant, it, the fee goes up much higher for that same day grade. Um, and they also, if you were to happen to be, that company's in Florida, I believe Sarasota. If you happen to be in the neighborhood and you got some comic books, you can stop by. But again, you're going to pay an exorbitant fee for that one day grade. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Early Stan Lee stuff, a collectible. Yes, very much. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at you. Um, yes, very much so. Stanley is is the gold standard. Him, him, Jack Kirby, Bob Kane, uh, Bob Kane's creator of uh, Batman. So, but Stanley is they call him Stan the Man for a reason. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You guys well, have any questions? Now's your chance. Um, where do you get them graded actually? Just send it off. Yeah, you, gotta, you go to the website, CGC or CBCS's website, and, and send it off to them. Um, 
with fees and, and everything, it can cost as little as 25 bucks, but with shipping and everything, it tends to be more in the $40, $50 range to get to get to start, and it goes up from there. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was just wondering if it was online or what. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. CGC. Right. How do you know you get your book back? I have not had a problem getting anything back from them, but I have lost probably you know, 20 years, 30 books through the mail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And some were, were real bummers. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. So, um, but I haven't had any problem getting them back from them. Um, you insure it, you get customer signature, you know, you do all that good stuff to protect it the best you can. Um, I haven't any, like I said, with any of the grading companies, I have any trouble getting it there or getting it back. But I have had dealing with other people selling them out of state um, issues there and uh, some issues with some that didn't show up to my cleaner and presser. Um, but that's just cost of doing business. So, they do dry clean them, yes. And they also, regular dry cleaner? Uh, I don't know the actual process themselves. It is chemical like uh, dry cleaning, I know that, but I haven't witnessed it yet. I, I couldn't help you there, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Um, so, if we wanted to come shop your shop, where would we go and what's the name? 110 West State Street, Alliance Comics Toys and Games, right here in O'Fallon, Illinois. Excellent. Do you have a website? We have a Facebook page and Instagram page. Um, website's kind of coming obsolete. Exactly. You know, we are planning on, on starting one eventually, but we're not quite sure what we're going to be doing. Okay. All right. Well, thank you folks for coming in. <laughs> thank you for coming in. Will, will you stay around for a few more questions? Sure, yeah, if anybody's got it. Excellent. Oh, after, yeah. Yeah, thank you.